I did, uh, which is great. So it's just work that I did um, back when I was at MIT. And so I, I joined Stanford last fall and one of the same investors there. Uh, and I was involved in a little bit of developing some of that software uh, and also using it for my research. Uh, <coughs> so I'll tell you a little bit about Drake, which is a uh, toolbox for planning, control, and, and analysis. Uh, so it's specifically toward, specifically toward robotics, but obviously a lot of these tools can are reused kind of all over the place in, in different communities. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the history, uh, so kind of the justification and the key insights behind Drake. Uh, then I'll, let, I'll go through some of the capabilities of that software and give you a sense of what you can do with Drake, uh, what you can't as of now, but uh, hopefully soon can do. And uh, walk you through a basic use case of, of Drake. <clears throat> All right, so where does Drake come from? Uh, so like I said, Drake started uh, at MIT. And it started in the Robot Locomotion Group, which was the group I was part of. Uh, and it, it was developed at the beginning, actually a lot by uh, Professor Ross Tittrick, who uh, was himself writing a lot of the code. Uh, and then he slowly convinced grad, convinced grad students to use it uh, for their research. And then uh, everyone kind of got on board and, and did a lot. Uh, so, so we got good development team working there, and then there was a kind of a key event that happened that really made people start using Drake a lot more, uh, which was the DARPA Robotics Challenge. So uh, you may have heard the DARPA Grand Challenge, which was the cars driving uh, autonomous. It was kind of one of the first kind of autonomous driving car uh, contests that, that they had. Uh, and, and more recently, they had the DARPA Robotics Challenge, which was the humanoids. Uh, so they wanted to have kind of human-shaped robots walking around, turning valves, and, and doing a bunch of pretty complicated tasks like driving cars, too. Um, so things like that. And then, so MIT had an entry, they had the team, uh, and Rush was part of it, and he convinced the team basically to use Drake. Uh, so because of kind of that pressure of competing, uh, <laughs> Drake got a lot of development, and uh, a lot of people got involved. So that was definitely a, kind of a, a, a key milestone. Uh, now, kind of more recently, uh, last year, some of you might know that the Toyota Research Institute invested a lot of money into research, uh, robotic research, at, uh, here at Stanford, at MIT, at Michigan. Uh, and so they kind of picked up Drake uh, on the way too. Uh, and now they're actively developing Drake. So it went from this uh, kind of, you know, the, the brainchild of Ross Tedrick uh, to becoming kind of the software that if you go on the GitHub now has a lot of contribution from, you know, full-time software engineers that work for Toyota uh, and that commit code that's very useful for, for robotics. Um, <clears throat> so I will, if you do, I'll, I'll just want to show you a little bit. Uh, just give you a sense of uh, what using Drake was uh, for the DRC challenge. So uh, one of the tasks that they had to do was to have, they had a bunch of debris, and it's basically they had to remove them out of their path and then be able to uh, walk forward. So obviously, it, it, you know, what, robotics is not there yet as to be able to do that 100% autonomously. Uh, but the, the goal, the, the way that the team approached that is to have operators kind of work uh, in uh, concert with, with Drake, with some planning, some decision-making software, uh, some control software uh, to, to accomplish a task. So the operators were giving kind of very high-level commands, uh, and then Drake was figuring out, okay, I have a 2x4 you know, here, it's not 2x4, I'm sorry, this is not a person, I have no idea what this is, but uh, yeah, <laughs> a piece of wood here, and then figure, Drake can then figure out you know, automatically kind of what, uh, what's the motion that's needed to go pick it up and get it out of the way. Um, So yeah, that gives you a sense a little bit of, so that's how powerful Drake was. Uh, it allowed them to kind of compete and uh, get all that working. Uh, so at the, now that, that's kind of the very kind of overblown view of what Drake is, as in it can do all these wonderful things. But if you really think it to the core of what it can do is it can simulate the dynamical system. Um, and well, that's really a model dynamical system. Uh, but the thing that it does is that it models the dynamical system in a way that we can do simulation analysis, planning, feedback control design, uh, and a lot of other things. So it, it's it's just the key that that's really the key insight is the way we're modeling the dynamical system really impacts uh, what we can do with them. And 
so, so a lot of you, I'm sure, have used uh, MATLAB Symbolink uh, in the past. So that's basically MATLAB GUI where you're you know, putting boxes and you can design systems and simulate them and sometimes design controllers um, sometimes. And so you can think of it a little bit as Drake being kind of a, a, a version of Symbolink, but that's more powerful. That has more capabilities uh, in, in some sense. So specifically for research, it's more powerful. Uh, and it's, and, and I'll, I'll explain to you why in a second. Um, but yeah, you can think of it as simulating on, on steroids. Um, okay, and why is that? Uh, so, if you guys have used Symlink, you're probably familiar with the uh, S function. Uh, so, when you're building Symlink models, you usually kind of drag and drop different pieces of your system that you're modeling, and then a lot of these become black boxes. So, what they become is you just you build this big diagram, uh, and in one of your box in your big diagram is something that, that's called an S function. And inside that S function, you're running some code that you're providing uh, the simulator. So it might be anything. It could be uh, you, you're running some dynamics. It could be non-smooth. It could be continuous. It could be discrete. It could be anything. Uh, and the real problem is that once you do that, as soon as one part of your entire system is kind of this black box, then you don't know what to do with any uh, with the entire system at all. Because if if you have an entire system that's a linear system, but then one little bit of your system is actually a non-smooth, non-linear system, then your entire system is not a non-linear, non-smooth system. Uh, and so then you can do QR, or you can do any of kind of the nice things that you can do with uh, linear control. Um, so that's a problem. And uh, so similarly kind of hides away a lot of that structure, and then we lose it, and we can't do anything with the systems that we model. And that's really where Drake comes in, that's where Drake's powerful, is that it, it's an implementation of kind of these simulating blocks that you can link together and use to simulate or design controllers, but it doesn't hide away the structure of the entire like, dynamics. So if your dynamics are, are quadratic, like in this case, um, and you're implementing an S function that's a quadratic, then you still know, then, then Drake still knows that it should handle that box as a quadratic and not just as a black box that has some weird dynamics in it. Uh, and that actually allows you to then develop controllers or to run planners and to run a whole bunch of stuff uh, that you wouldn't be able to if you if you didn't know the underlying structure of uh, that block. Is there any question? Because that's kind of like the key concept. No? Cool. All right, awesome. Um, so modeling is like I said, it's centered to basically how to use Drake. So I'm just going to walk you through a little bit uh, the two ways that you can uh, model your systems. So uh, two, two of the main ways, there's other ways. Uh, but one, one thing that is uh, important early on is to be able to kind of you know, get the roboticist and, and people doing uh, <coughs> decision making to kind of be able to use that system right away. Uh, and what people use is your IDF uh, right now. So if you, use, yeah, if you guys had a, uh, we had a presentation on Gazebo uh, this morning. Um, so. SDF is kind of the new URDF. But URDF is basically uh, one way that Drake can actually make an assistant to model it, uh, for, so for specifically rigid body planners. Uh, and then the other way is for you to kind of implement it by hand uh, through code through the Drake system class. Um, so to give you a sense of those two ways, so like I said, URDF is a, a file, uh, you should say, so it's an XML file um, that you write of your system. Uh, so in the case of a, and it, it has to be a, a rigid binder layer. So what that means is it has to be a bunch of links uh, that are rigid bodies, and then joints that link them. And that forms a tree of the entire robot. Uh, that might seem constrictive in terms of you, you, if you're trying to think, oh, wow, is, can I actually model systems as just a bunch of links and then joints between them? Uh, but keep in mind that Atlas, which is the giant robot uh, that you saw moving around the, the pipes earlier on, was actually modeled entirely with this. Uh, so it's actually, you can do a lot with just your RDFs. Uh, and the kind of the three component of your RDFs are usually, so the links, the joints, uh, and then transmission. So basically actuators that you have uh, there. Um, the interesting thing is also, which is actually where uh, I was I was involved uh, specifically in the implementation, is Drake can actually support a lot of other things in their URDF. So it's actually, for example, for it to do aerodynamics. Uh, if you have an airfoil in your system, you can actually simulate that uh, using XFOIL uh, and uh, yeah, a whole bunch of other tags that are kind of weird, but that you can put in there and simulate kind of more complicated dynamics using just a URDF. Uh, now, if the URDF route kind of doesn't suit you, the other way you can model your system in Drake uh, is just to implement your own class. Uh, so, 
this is going to look very familiar if, if you've ever modeled any dynamical system. Um, basically, you'll just have a subclass of the drip system uh, that, that takes in and will give you dynamics. Uh, and then you'll implement a dynamics function, so in this case, uh, it's a polynomial and uh, uh, an output function. Um, so it's as simple as that. Basically, really just the, that kind of one line is really uh, the one thing you have to implement if you want to implement a simple system. Um, yeah, and the cool thing is, uh, so like I said in this example, so now if you were to give that to Drake, this class, Drake would keep in mind the fact that this is a polynomial system. Uh, if you give that to simple like part an S function, it would not. So that's really where kind of the, the gap is. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so now you've modeled kind of a block, right? You have a URDF or you have uh, a dynamic system and you, you model a block. So now what you usually want to do uh, is write a summation with that, and usually you'll have more than one block. So it'll end up being, so through code, you can basically link your blocks the same way that you do with little GUI uh, and simulate, and, and then simulate it. So it looks a little bit like this in the case of, let's say we had a plant block and we have a controller, uh, which would be, for example, our controller would be our system number two, our system number one would be the plant. Uh, I'll show you how, how we can do the hopper on QR after. Um, and then we'll just basically tell like Drake, okay, create another system which is a feedback between those two underlying systems and then simulate it. Uh, and then depending on your system, maybe it can simulate it differently. So if you have collision involved, uh, it can support that. If you don't, then it can be simple integration. Um, so there's, there's different kind of different simulation uh, tools on the hood. Uh, <clears throat> trajectory optimization, which is uh, a little bit like a, uh, what we were talking about a little bit earlier with Julia. So that's another thing now that you have your system, you might not just want to simulate it, but you might want to actually be able to design trajectories with your system. So same problem as earlier, we have an initial goal and a final goal, uh, an initial state and a final state, sorry. And uh, we're trying to design a trajectory that goes from spike to spike. Uh, so that's a way, so Drake uh, supports very simple ways of taking your systems and giving you a trajectory <coughs> that respects these sets of constraints. So this is what we're doing here. Um, I can post these slides over after if you guys want to use that as reference, but obviously that's all online too. Uh, but basically what, the only thing we need to tell Drake is, okay, if you're doing a trajectory optimization problem, uh, we have an initial state, a final state, we have a cost function that we're trying to minimize, so we're trying to use as little energy as we can, uh, and then we're solving for the optimal trajectory. Uh, so the cool thing here is that we, when we're doing, for example, the, the vertical trajectory optimization, um, <coughs> if we just have a simple linear system, then there's a close form solution, which Drake can just give us, right? Uh, but if you have a nonlinear system, uh, Drake knows that, and then what they can do is actually run, I'll, I'll, I'll run you know, more complicated uh, optimization software, so in this case, uh, if, you a, if you have a nonlinear system, they'll run SNOP, and it'll it'll do SPP. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that, because uh, all you need to care about is setting up your constraint, writing your system, and then getting your trajectory out of it. So that's like a very quick way of getting trajectory running, uh, which is actually something that, if you've ever tried to do this using directly the optimization software, is uh, kind of a pain, because you have to go through all the indexing, it's very easy to make a mistake. Uh, so that's really one of the power groups, it makes trajectory optimization incredibly easy. Uh, and also make sure that it's using the right software for your specific problem. Uh, so yeah, and then same thing for driving controllers. Uh, basically, if you have if you have a if you have a system, you can easily derive another system which is a controller for that system, uh, and and that's easily basically done with just simple commands. <coughs> uh, I want to give you a quick live demo. So this is uh, basically just a 2D plot. So, so, uh, so we have a, a, you know, a simple plan that just the system, so we've implemented the, the Drake system class for specifically a, a 2D plot runner. Uh, and then all that Drake is doing is uh, deriving an uh, LQR controller, which is an optimal uh, layer controller for that system, and then creating that feedback system. So it's really just the comment that I showed earlier. Uh, and then simulating it with a bunch of initial conditions. Uh, and obviously it's stabilizing the quarter order from a bunch of initial conditions properly. Cool, so that's the main kind of workflow, I would say, for Drake. Uh, do modeling, uh, control, driving some controllers, and doing some trajectory optimization. Uh, any questions before I go into tools? Cool, okay. Uh, so. 
Obviously, when you have a robotics toolbox, you don't want to just, uh, I mean, it, it's a big claim that all you're doing is uh, you know, deriving controllers or all the medical system. So there's actually a lot of tools that come with Drake that are very useful. Uh, one of them, uh, one in particular I like is Drake Director. Uh, so Drake Director, Uh, so Drake Director basically uh, is, a, is a visualizer, a little bit like for the ones uh, who are familiar with Arbiz, for people who are familiar with Arbiz, it's a little bit like Arbiz, uh, but, uh, yeah, but specifically for Drake. Uh, so it gives you kind of this nice visualization of your robot, it could be in real time, it could be a simulation. Um, it supports, uh, it's built on a BTK, and also the cool thing with the visualizer is it's extremely easy to just implement kind of little Python modules uh, that you can put at the back uh, and in the back end, and it will you know visualize different things that you want to visualize. So that's that's it's kind of extendability is is what's the power uh, behind that tool. So Drake Director, uh, another good tool that comes with Drake, basically. <coughs> Cool, so I, oh, uh, one last thing, yeah, so a lot of the even decision making people uh, and the robotics people and the planning community, everyone, uh, we all like to do actual experiments on hardware uh, once we have something working because that's often the goal is to get the system in the real world. Uh, so uh, Drake also has support for uh, hardware in a, in a way that Kind of the same way that Ross has support for hardware. So there's a way of if you have any system that you're modeling in Drake, you can basically tell it any of your output signals actually broadcasting over the network. Uh, and through that mechanism, then you can enable a whole bunch of different hardware platforms to just kind of listen to those messages and then uh, you know behave as uh, with respect to how the controller is making that system behave. Uh, so yeah, that's one way of you, know, you can have literally just your Drake system and then the feedback happens with with a real system in a network. Uh, and that goes through LCM. So uh, the, the messages that basically the system are, are sending are LCM messages. So I'll just talk really quickly about uh, LCM because uh, that's kind of a, I don't know if people here are familiar with it at all. Uh, it actually came out of uh, the Dark Art Brand Challenge, so the, the DRC, but the card the one I mentioned earlier. Uh, and the goal is, is actually kind of like the Rust messaging uh, framework, but kind of a little bit more lightweight, uh, and it works super well, so it's also you know, if one of those little things you might want to keep in mind as like an alternative for messaging in, in any of your work. Uh, it works very well, and it's not integrated in Drake, uh, but basically it's very similar to the Rust messages where you define a template, um, so you define a template of the message that you want to send, uh, that's a language agnostic, so you just Defining okay, I have these messages I'll be sending around. I have a bunch of integers and a bunch of uh, uh, flows and, and probably artifacts too. Uh, and then you can run uh, a utility that will then generate a bunch of headers for a variety of languages. So C++, Java, Java, the whole list on the other side. Uh, and then there are very easy to use uh, after that. So you can very very similar to the way you send messages in Ross, so you, you'll create some message, you'll add some content to it, and then you can publish it over the network. So again, very similar to Rust, but a little bit more lightweight. One thing is, uh, so Rust is built on TCP UDP, uh, and is, is, is not going to be kind of broadcasted to everyone. Uh, in LCM, it's, uh, it's built completely on UDP, and it's a uh, broadcast to all kind of uh, network architecture. So, and there's also a bunch of tools with LCM uh, that come, for example, with LCM Spy, and I'll allow you to see all the messages that are being broadcast on the network. So through that messaging layer, uh, it's very easy then to use Drake to do a model, uh, to do a model of your system, to uh, derive a controller, to get a trajectory based on trajectory optimization, and again, to just execute that in the real system. Uh, and I think I have, I don't know what uh, So I will walk you through a use case. Okay, I think it's going to make a lot more sense uh, yeah. if you kind of see what you can do with it than uh, if I just tell you about it. So <clears throat> this was some of my work uh, two years ago, um, which was basically to plan uh, and execute trajectories for a very small part order, uh, which is called the crazy fly. Uh, and it's about I think it's 20 centimeter uh, on each side. 
and basically you plan the very aggressive trajectories with it in a highly plotted environment. So you have a lot of obstacles here in front of the strings, uh, and then uh, trying to go as fast as you can, basically, uh, to avoid them. So this is actually Drake Director. Uh, so it was, uh, I used the tool, obviously, and I, I wrote a plugin for uh, those polytones so that you can see them. Um, yeah, so this whole project was basically enabled uh, by Drake. And I'll walk you through a little bit kind of the steps of how to get a tiny quadrotor uh, that's just an off-the-shelf quadrotor you can buy online and uh, use these things uh, if you use the right software. Uh, that's, that's. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> right, so what are the steps? Uh, first is, like I said, bombing uh, the system. Then designing optimal trajectories, which is the trajectory that avoids all the strings, uh, which is all the kind of the decision making part of this. Then synthesizing the controller, uh, which makes sure that you're actually following the plan that you initially designed. And then running that controller, uh, which is sounds easy, it should just be right, just running, run, uh, but robotics is never easy. That always takes weeks and weeks, unless, uh, yeah, unless you have a right software with it. Uh, cool, so how do we model the system? Uh, I, I, use, I like this example because it's actually kind of a special case of using that, that Drake system architecture. Uh, because, like I said, you have these two options earlier. You can use a URDF, which is an XML file that describes your robot, or you can also write it by hand. Um, but turns out, you can also, actually, if you want, uh, nothing prevents you from kind of combining those two. So that's what ended up happening because uh, what we had was a kind of a system that was easy. You could make a you know a very easy model uh, of using your idea. Yeah. So just basically, say these are four motors. This is a rigid body, uh, and those motors produce an amount of thrust. So a very simple model. That's all your idea. Just an XML file, basically your thing. Uh, but then the problem is that the way we're controlling the quad motor is actually by sending attitude demands. Um, and there's a reason for that, which we're not going to go into. It has to do with how fast you want to run those control loops. But uh, the point is that that physical system doesn't encapsulate everything. Uh, there's also a kind of a software component to that system, which is the onboard controller, onboard of the, the quadrotor. Uh, so what you can do, uh, what we end up doing is basically then taking and uh, building a uh, kind of a system model around the kind of the simpler system that models the controller that's onboard the software. Uh, so it's kind of a model inside of another model, uh, and it's a mix of both strategies of modeling and trick. Uh, and it turns out once you have that system model in Drake, um, <coughs> then and some path uh, that comes. So that was actually the topic of the research, so it didn't exactly come out of Drake, although it was integrated after, uh, which is an, an optimization problem to compute fast. So you can get these are our polynomial trajectories uh, that avoid obstacles, and obviously not the topic of this talk. Uh, but so you can have a model, you have a path that you want to follow, uh, and now in Drake you want to compute controller, super easy. All you do is you call PDLQR, uh, which is the time varying version of LQR, for those of you who are familiar with LQR. But um, what's, what's interesting is that that controller is just another system. Uh, so you have, you have your, your, control, your quadrotor system, and then Drake can derive you another system, which is the controller itself. And that's the, the controller that you're going to run to stabilize the trajectory. Um, yeah, and then to run it, uh, that's where there's a lot, there's more software that comes into it, which is just kind of making uh, whatever robot you have enabled with LCM, uh, is basically with what's on you. Uh, so, and that's, that's what uh, kind of creating crazy fly tools, so if you guys are wanting to crazy fly, uh, that's a good, good place to start, so that you can your crazy fly supports LCM. Uh, and yeah, so with this, basically, that just makes the crazy fly support LCM, and with this controller that I showed you how to design, uh, you can easily run it and then get these whole trajectories uh, that are, I think, quite impressive. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, what's next for Drake? Well, now that it's a TRI, uh, people are actively working on a lot of things. Uh, one of them, one of the main things is that uh, you want to get away from MATLAB as much as possible. Right now, it's kind of a mix of C++ and MATLAB. Uh, the goal is to make this 100% C++. The um, trick is almost there, uh, but not quite. And then have kind of MATLAB wrappers and Python wrappers and Julia uh, wrappers. Uh, also, better simulation, uh, combined with that simulation, so it's just not, not everything is kind of 
bricks, um, things that are combined slightly. Uh, and yeah, a lot of other stuff that, that TRI is interested in, that Gavini is interested in, and uh, that hopefully you guys are going to get involved with as well. Uh, is there any questions?